How's it going ladies and gentlemen? This is Rifleman Reviews coming at you today with a range report and brief cleaning of my Sig Sauer P220 and 10mm automatic. Uh, I'm starting to really like this pistol folks. Um, I took it out to my range today, shot some steel at about 25 yards and I was consistently ringing just, um, it was probably about a 5 inch plate um, out at 25 yards as long as I was taking my time and my trigger presses I was hitting it consistently uh, and then also at 10 and then there's another one at 20 yards and I was just transitioning from various uh, distances and uh, using my double action squeeze mostly at the 10 and 20 um, for uh, <clears throat> for the those distances and then as it went out farther I mainly just used single action um, but yeah, the gun has proven to be extremely accurate and extremely reliable based off of this last trip. I put over 104 rounds, 105 rounds uh, through the gun this last trip and I didn't have a single hiccup. Uh, through the gun so far, I have put a total of 250 rounds of this standard Remington 180 grain ball ammunition. Um, and Really, this stuff is fed really well. I think within the first 50 rounds of firing this stuff, uh, I had like one failure to feed, but I just slingshotted that slide and it fed it perfectly. Uh, and uh, you know, you know, I attribute that to the gun's break-in period, honestly. And then um, next up, I fired 40 rounds of this 10 millimeter Underwood ammunition. Uh, you can see here that. Underwood says that this stuff is coming out of the pipe at uh, 1350 at the muzzle. That's generating approximately seven, 730 foot-pounds of energy. Uh, if you look on uh, Underwood's website, they actually bumped this load back down to 1300. Uh, and the reason being is they were using a new powder that was supposedly safe through the uh, Delta Elite. So it was allowing them to load uh, other 10 millimeter rounds a little bit hotter with lower chamber pressures. But uh, they ended up going, they ended up uh, loading this back down uh, for, I guess, what they were telling me was reliability issues. Um, uh, I haven't really had any problems with it. Actually, I take that back. Uh, the first box that I fired of this stuff. Um, I did have some issues. I had probably three failure to, uh, failure to feeds, um, but same deal with this stuff. I just slingshot it in uh, just a second time, just pulled the uh, slide back and let it go, uh, just like you would with an AK instead of riding the slide forward, um, and it fed fine after that. And on top of that, this range trip. I uh, fired another full box of this ammunition, actually two full boxes of this ammunition, and um, I'm sorry, I fired one full box of this range trip, and uh, I didn't have any problems with this ammunition uh, at all today. And I know that that's only 20 rounds uh, with that hollow point that with uh, no failures of feed. But, you know, I'm thinking that the gun's starting to get broken in and there's not going to be any more feeding issues because uh, I recently purchased this stuff. Uh, and this was on Underwood's website at going out of the pipe at 1,530 feet per second. Uh, but like I said, they're going back to their older velocities. So this one's back down to 1,500 feet per second. This XTP, uh, this XTP round. 1500 feet per second with 155 grain projectile that's coming out with uh, approximately 770 foot pounds of energy now we're talking about some stronger than some 357 magnum right there uh, and that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for when I'm talking about home defense bear defense winter carry um, carrying a 10 millimeter so I'm I'm going to be carrying the, the toughest stuff, the strongest stuff I, I, I can get my hands on. Um, I just like the 10 millimeter round. I like the, uh, how it hits with authority. And this is the ticket right here, this Underwood stuff. And honestly, this stuff has a lot less, I won't say a lot less, it has less recoil 
than this 180 grain stuff. And I think that's just a matter of uh, physics. It's a lighter bullet, so it's gonna have a little less recoil. So you need to get yourself uh, some of this stuff. I shot 40 rounds of this today, and that yielded to absolutely uh, no malfunctions of any kind. So, so far through the rifle, uh, through the rifle, through the pistol, I have fired 250 rounds of standard ball ammunition, 80 rounds of underwood of various weights. So we're talking about 330 rounds right there. And on top of that, I also took the liberty uh, to buy some of the SIG V-Crown jacketed hollow points. I don't have the box with me because I shot them all up today. And that was standard 180 grain. Um, I think they uh, advertise that they're coming out of the muzzle around 600 foot-pounds of energy, 630, something like that, uh, which is still, uh, it's respectable for sure. It's stronger than uh, most of your handgun calibers out there, um, but it's not the strongest. It's not the most powerful. Um, didn't have any problems with the SIG ammunition, and uh, honestly, that was, a, that was about the same price as the Underwood stuff. So... Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't buy the Underwood when it's when it's available online, unless you're afraid to buy things online. <laughs> uh, but you got to get up with the times, I guess, uh, if you want the premium stuff. Um, so what I said, I said uh, that's 330 rounds plus the extra 20 from the Sig. We're talking 350 rounds of uh, ammunition I fired through this pistol so far, and. I've had probably not since the 150th round, I haven't had a single issue. Uh, so in the last 200 rounds, I've had nothing but um, reliability going so far. No failure to feeds and um, failure to, I, I would never say that it has a failure to eject because this sucker, it kicks brass out uh, probably about six feet behind you. So um, it's, it's a, it's a real nice uh, pistol. So anyways, let's talk about uh, real quick what I'm carrying this thing in. I've got a, uh, I ordered off a of Lone Star holsters or Lone Star leather or something out of Texas. Uh, when I received the package, it came from uh, Black Hills leather. Uh, and I will put the, the link in the description below in case I'm misquoting this, but I got it. It's a nice holster. I'm telling you what, this is uh, some premium leather. It's thick. It's real thick leather. Uh, I got the military variety where it clips on your belt down here, um, right here. And then also I have the double mag pouch and it actually will clip down here. The only issue is when I got the holster, I didn't read the instructions that told you to put some Loctite, right? It tells you to put Loctite on the, uh, screws and to make sure they're tight every time you wear them. So the screw of course fell out. Uh, I called up, uh, I believe is the owner, and he said just to e email him my address and he'd send me a new screw, he'd send me some new hardware. Uh, so kudos to him, I haven't got it yet because I, I haven't actually emailed him, so I have not a lot of time to do it, but um, I have no doubts that I'm gonna end up getting uh, that screw. And honestly I've been carrying, I've been carrying it just like this. And I actually think I prefer it. You know, it's anchored down here, and this isn't a lot of weight when there's a, when they're fully loaded magazines, but the weight just kind of keeps it down, and it's pretty comfortable. You throw a jacket over, completely concealed, perfect winter, uh, winter carry option right there. Um, and this is a big gun. So now that we're nine minutes in the video, let's uh, show you uh, the actual pistol now. So Black Hills leather, okay? Uh, take a look at them. They'll give you different uh, different options on what you what you like. Different colors, different styles. You don't have to get the military style like I like I have. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's safety check this bad boy. So uh, this thing is wearing really nicely. Honestly, the only marks I've made on it, I've made a scratch here, and. Uh, I think a couple scratches uh, from the brass kicking out and uh, a couple from holster wear. And honestly, I'm not too concerned about any holster wear going on here, folks. Uh, 
it's a carry gun and that's what I'm using it for and it's gonna get some holster wear. I'm not concerned it's stainless steel. Uh, if it does get a scratch, guess what? It's stainless steel. It's not gonna corrode like uh, other other pistols out there that just um, that just uh, cover up, you know, like some regular, I don't know what kind of steel, like carbon steel or higher carbon content in their steel. Um, of course, stainless steel will still rust. You got to keep it um, cleaned off. It's usually surface rust, um, but, you know, it's a lot more resistant. And, you know, it being next to your body as a carry weapon, you're going to have to wipe it down regularly. Uh, that's what I recommend. Uh, the sights are really nice. Um, the serrations I find uh, I really appreciate under uh, fire, especially uh, with the uh, heavier, the heavier uh, 180 grain uh, underwood loads, and then the 155 grain loads uh, from underwood. I appreciate that. Uh, the serrations and the um, the uh, stippling on the <clears throat> on the grip, this Hogue G10 grip. Uh, this gun fits my hand really nice. I love it. Um, I love just about everything about this gun. Um, you know what would make the SIG needs to do is they need to make the 227 in a 10 millimeter offering with a steel frame. Uh, I'd like to know what you what you guys would think about that. Uh, those who actually appreciate the 10 millimeter, that is. Uh, but the 227 and 10 millimeter offering, yep, it would once again make, in my opinion, uh, the P220 obsolete. Uh, but um, uh, I would appreciate that picking one of those up, and I'd still keep this gun for like a target gun or uh, just something. I just love this pistol the way it looks. Um, anyways, uh, also I picked up. So this gun comes with two magazines. So it's one, two, we are unloaded with all our magazines since we're dealing with live ammunition. Three, I picked up another one from the SIG website. These, th these suckers are $50. Uh, anyone who can tell me where to find a cheaper magazine, I would be greatly appreciative. Uh, I know that some people had luck with the 45 rounders, but you know what? This is my bedside, this is my carry gun. I'm trusting my life to it. I want the 10, uh, 10 millimeter mags. I mean, so if you can, if anybody knows where to get them for a little bit cheaper, maybe thirty, forty dollars, uh, I would greatly appreciate that information. <laughs> so um, let's see if I can. You guys can look at that. So you're done looking at my face. <laughs> um, so. Yep, that's all we're getting. I'm trying to move this table closer to you guys here. Well, well, that didn't help too much. There we go. So, anyways, um, let's get down to the uh, quick and dirty, the cleaning bit. All right, I know this is probably where I'm going to lose a lot of people in their um, in their views, but that's okay with me because only a few people like 10 millimeter and other people can appreciate a gun clean video so let's take a look at how this gun's holding up after say 60 rounds i'm sorry 80 rounds of the 60 or 80 rounds of the um, underwood ammunition this is the this is the potent stuff um you know i'm gonna go ahead and just move this live ammunition off the table and we're gonna begin cleaning I prefer Ballastol. This is my first can of, of buying this stuff. I've seen Ballastol uh, all over uh, the internet. People were raving about it. And um, it it works pretty well. I like it. And I think the biggest seller for me is it says it's skin safe and no carcinogens. And um, it's been around for such a long time that, you know, this is the... Uh, I'm just going to give it a chance and see how I like it. So far, it's it's working out for me pretty nicely. And uh, I generally use the uh, the standard CLP, uh, which works, you know, it works fine. I like it. Um, but we'll clean the ballast all the day. Um, 
So what, first thing we're going to do is I like to spray down all the components real quick with some Ballastol. Uh, start that process um, of cleaning out the carbon and just give a good healthy coat all over it. Make sure one of the key points is this, uh, this slide face right here. And folks, when you're uh, <clears throat> when you're dealing with uh, chemicals and cleaning supplies, I almost broke my rules. Use a ventilated area. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know that um, most of you already probably know that, but uh, for you new people out there, use a ventilated area because after years of doing this stuff, uh, it's gonna mess with you. And uh, there's a. I think it's medical safety data sheets. You got to take a look at the medical safety data sheets. Um, and if I'm wrong on that acronym MSDS, yes, MSDS uh, for complete safety and health uh, guidelines, um, just take a look at it. It lets you know what exactly you're dealing with and the amounts that you should be exposing yourself to. <clears throat> Let me open up a window real quick and we'll continue with this on. And I'm back. So, spray down the slide. Let that uh, kind of marinate in there a little bit. Uh, got the bolt face, or the slide face. Got the back in here, got where the trigger housing is. Or I'm not trigger, fire pin, firing pin area. And then the muzzle tends to get a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of powder residue as well. <clears throat> If you get an all stainless steel gun, you'll see that, um, the build up on that. And then I get the barrel, of course, and then the inside of the chamber, get the muzzle. <clears throat> Here we go, we got the, uh, the recoil spring guide and assembly. Got that, let that marinate for a little bit. We got the frame, this stout stainless steel frame. Built to handle that big 10 millimeter cartridge. This thing has been holding up real well, folks. Um, really enjoy it. <clears throat> so basically, Getting along the slide and the rails and getting in the uh, the locking mechanism for the slide <clears throat> uh, I forget what it's called the locking block Forgive me. I'm not uh, well versed on the actual Parts uh, of the pistol. I just know their significance and what they do. I don't know the official names though I'm not a sig armor by any means and many people tell me that I over lubricate my pistols, but my experience that pistols like to run, they like to run wet. <clears throat> so I've got a microfiber tile here. Put that down. And what I'm gonna first I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm going to start scrubbing the bore out. And I try if you have a uh, a bore snake, it's always good to go from the breech to the muzzle. Um, that's what I recommend when you scrub the bore and the chamber. Breech to muzzle. Uh, that just protects your crowning. It protects, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, your barrel crown. <laughs> Not crowning. Um, and it protects uh, the rifling for the most part. Um, that's what I've been taught. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't really noticed the difference. I used to clean my AK uh, just with the cleaning rod down. And uh, I mean, that thing wasn't very accurate, but I s assumed it was because it's an AK-47. And um, that was when I was more of a novice. I know AKs have the potential being pretty accurate. So uh, who knows? I don't know if I was messing with it or I was just, <clears throat> just being uh just being a newer shooter, not being very accurate. 
trying to multitask and clean here. I was thinking that this would make good uh, video material. Talk about the gun while I'm cleaning it. I'm not the first one to do this. Uh, let's see, uh, the Armory Channel does this, and um, I appreciate his videos. <clears throat> he has some pretty good content. I recommend you check him out. Uh, a lot of videos actually, a lot of those gun uh, channels, they do the uh, cleaning and the discussion. They generally don't do the review all at the same time, it's usually a dedicated cleaning video, but uh, I'm kind of doing both here, and multitasking. Um, <clears throat> so, so, clean out that bore there, that chamber, it's pretty clean. Uh, Clean enough for some, uh, some more social and some more social work if I need it. Um, I recommend if you do carry your pistol, you keep it clean. You probably should probably wipe it down, uh, wipe it down and relubricate it. I recommend doing it probably once every one to two weeks, especially if you carry it often, because you get uh, a lot of uh, lint um, or just dirt and debris. Uh, on the slide and the rails and if you don't keep the the action free of all that stuff your chances of failure or or malfunctions increases greatly um, <clears throat> that's just uh, my experience uh, like I haven't ever had to use my pistol in a defensive situation but in my experience if you don't clean pistols especially um, they do have a tendency to uh, malfunction. Uh, this one went 100 rounds today without any sort of cleaning. So, um, I mean, 100 rounds isn't by any means a torture test or a testament to its ability to withstand, uh, you know, uh, adverse conditions, but um, it was still getting pretty dirty. So I'm just kind of scrubbing out the inside here, <clears throat> and um, I was able to take several of my guns today to the range. I took my other SIG, my P938, out to the range as well and uh, fired a couple hundred rounds through it. Uh, actually, it's more like 150 rounds, but um, and it formed okay <clears throat> so I'm just cleaning out right now cleaning out the inside clean out the bolt or the uh, chamber or the, <laughs> the slide face here I'm sorry using a q-tip clean out the uh, the inside uh, channels here these grooves And then once again, I clean off the rails. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead, clean off the muzzle here, or the slide, the front of the slide, where the barrel goes through. Okay. All right. Clean out the slide. I'm gonna clean off where the hammer strikes the firing pin. And this is a real like sloppy. I'm not gonna lie, folks. This is a real sloppy job. I'm just kind of wiping it down real quick for you, but it doesn't take long just to uh, wipe out this uh, little bit of residue in here and wipe this off. All right. Now we're gonna wipe down the slide real quick. I'd say one of the spots you should get, like I said, is this locking block. I think I call it the locking block. Could be the wrong term. I know it's pretty sure it's the wrong, <laughs> the wrong term, but I can't think of it right now. So we'll call it the locking block. 
one of you guys who are a little more educated than myself can correct me down in the comments, please. So I know some of you live for that. Okay, just cleaning this off here. And if any of you see any anything I'm doing wrong as far as cleaning goes, please by all means let me know so I can stop doing the wrong thing. Um, and like I said, I know I'm cleaning through it pretty fast. I'll probably go over once the video is over. Uh, go over it once again uh, with a little more detail. <clears throat> but for your sake uh, and the video's sake of getting already at 25, 26 minutes, uh, we're gonna reassemble this thing. You got your frame. It's been wiped down pretty pretty quickly, I might add. Okay, we'll put this down. And actually, before I put assemble it, let's take a look at that right there. This finish on this barrel here, um, right around the uh, the barrel, just on the uh, what did that be? The inside. You start to see a little shining right there. A little uh, wear, metal's wearing off, but not a big deal. Um, there's some on the inside. That's some standard, just SIG wear. That's uh, that's very normal, folks. Um, that's very normal uh, for all the SIGs I've had, which I've had. Um, I've had a P227. I've had a 229, <clears throat> which I plan to get another 229. Um, I'd love to get one in 357 SIG all stainless version with the short extractor. I know one's out there, I'll find it eventually. But uh, that's some standard uh, areas to, to where it would be right up here on the top here. Um, and then down here on the barrel, on this bottom part of the barrel, and then on the top of the barrel. I'm not seeing actually anywhere on the top of the barrel right now. But, all right, let's get back to the reassembly. goes in any standard Sigway. You got your recoil spring assembly. Now, this one's captured. The purple end goes onto the barrel part. The locks onto the barrel. And then the other end goes right into here. <clears throat> okay, it's together. Slide the rail. On that, lock it back with the little slide lock. Okay, just lock back, rotate the lever, the takedown lever, back to uh, assembly, or back to uh, locked, and test her out. Try it, try the decocker first. That works. Now let's try double acting trigger pull. That work now. Let's see if the reset works. Perfect. She works. So that pretty much does it, folks. Um, that was just a little range report. Uh, I just wanted the gist of the 28, 29 minute video was that uh, I've put just about 350 rounds through it, and I haven't had any issues as far as feeding goes for about 200 rounds um, and I've probably a total of stoppages I've had was uh, with one with the FMJ within the first hundred rounds and then a uh, couple uh, all the way up to 150 rounds was with that uh, that Underwood ammo uh, I think it was maybe a total of maybe three to five failure to feeds to include that uh, FMJ um, so that was just attributed to the break-in period. Honestly, that's that's all I'm gonna attribute it to. Um, so so far, in my opinion, this gun is good to go. Uh, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. You know, I'm at 350 rounds now. I'll probably post another one at 500 rounds um, and see how the gun's holding up. Uh, I'll probably post up some accuracy at that point because then at that point I've 
had enough trigger time behind the pistol. I found the load that I like to use. Um, and we'll see what kind of results I can yield with my skill set, which isn't very good. <laughs> but uh, uh, at least I will have been a little bit practiced uh, with this. So uh, without further ado, folks, I'm going to go ahead and put this gun away. And you guys have a nice day. And I hope to see you guys soon. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to have more content and more guns for you at a later time. Uh, this channel's starting to grow a little bit. And I just look forward to hearing uh, what kind of either positive or corrective things I can do for more uh, entertainment value for my next upcoming videos. Thanks, folks. Have a good one.